Hello everybody, this is Tim here again. Here with my review for the next Ernest film, Ernest Goes to the Jail. I figured I'd break out my DVD this time. Once again, directed by John Cherry. Um, once again, Jim Barney. He's fine. Aces. Uh, basically, this is the evil twin Ernest movie. Every character has to get an evil twin movie for some reason eventually. Um, I love this movie as a kid. I watched this one the most as a kid. Uh, I watch this one all the time. Watching it now as an adult, though, it's not as good as the ones that I've been reviewing so far. It's almost as good as Ernest Goes to Camp, but what kind of prevents it from being as good as Ernest Goes to Camp uh, is the special effects at the end with the final are a little bit a little bit dated. Well, actually, in some shots, incredibly dated. But Jim Varney still sells the movie, and he amps it up to being an okay movie. This is a two-star film of a possible four. It's an okay movie. It's uh, not horrible by any means. And Jim Varney is, once again, a delight to watch. Basically, the plot is, you know, Ernest goes to jail. <laughs> Just another adventure with Ernest, which is fine. He's a very lovable character. He's very entertaining to watch. He gets jury duty, and he's so excited about it. And You get this funny scene where he's on the uh, jury. And he fucking like bites into this pen and gets all the ink on his face. It looks like like a gallon of ink. And uh, he puts like a big paper wad in his mouth. Like where he's using a piece of paper to try to like wipe off the ink. He puts it in his mouth. The fucking judge looks at him and uh, she's like, um, sir, are you all right? And he's like, just fine. Thank you. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. And the face Jim Barney makes just fucking cracks me up to no end. Um, and then uh, they, uh, they're they going to go to like the actual prison um, to like check out the facility. The jury, the jury is, and he looks over at the guy next to him and goes, oh boy, a field trip. <laughs> like when he's got all the ink and shit on his face. I thought that was hilarious. The weakness of this movie is the fact that Ernest does go to jail in the film and like his evil twin switches spots with him. This film has a slightly more adult edge than the other Ernest movies that I've talked about so far. Well, besides Dr. Otto, which is not really an Ernest movie. But um, because this film takes place, you know, and deals with jail, takes place in jail. But uh, the problem with this film is that the more interesting stuff happens with Ernest in jail and the, the other stuff like with the evil twin out at the bank and everything. It's just not as interesting. I love seeing Jim Varney though play another character besides Ernest playing like a gangster or whatever, which is uh, pretty neat. One thing I thought was funny is uh, Ernest gets in a fight with him at the end of the movie. Uh, all of that was entertaining besides the data special effects. And in this movie... Uh, Ernest gets his Electro Man powers, where he can, like, fucking, he gets electrocuted, and he can, like, uh, make shit, like, he's magnetized, he can fly and everything, which, so that's pretty entertaining. Uh, if it wasn't for the data special effects, to be honest, that stuff would be way more entertaining than what it is, but by data special effects, it is dated, but it's not horrible or anything, it doesn't hurt me to, hurt me, it doesn't really hurt me to watch it or nothing. But, um, maybe if it was a lesser actor, or an actor with lesser charisma than Jim Varney, it probably would hurt me to watch it, but it doesn't in this case. But like at the beginning, he gets electrocuted, and fucking all this shit starts coming after him. Uh, and, then, and then later on, this girl shows up who works at the bank, who Ernest kind of has a crush on, and uh, she's like, Ernest, what are you doing in the vault? And he's like, it was awful. Uh, he says something like, everything started chasing me, and he points at like these two uh, drawers or whatever, and he's like, especially these two. I thought that was hilarious. I love that. Um, but, uh, the problem is, yeah, the stuff in jail with Jim Varney is just far more interesting than the shit that's going on outside of jail. But, um, it, uh, he keeps trying to escape from jail. Like, he fucking will, uh, he, like, makes a gun out of soap. Like, a big fucking, look like a, uh, I mean, the gun he makes is, like, huge, is what I find so funny about it. He's like, thank God I paid attention in art class, which I found hilarious. Um, other stuff, though, it's a little bit silly. He tries to, like, hook the guard's keys from his pants, and he, like, rips off the guard's entire pants. That's a little bit silly. Once again, you get the silly humor in here. But, yes, Ernest is a character that tries to appeal more to children, I would say. But at the same time, the best children's characters are the ones that adults can laugh at and love, too. And adults can love the Ernest character. I do, and I'm an adult. And I love the Ernest character, and I know lots more people do, too. But the problem comes with some of the jokes are a little bit too childish, I think. Uh, but... It's still, still Jim Varney sells them pretty good. I love this when he tries to escape from prison. He dresses up like his old woman character that he does in all these, in all the other films. And, uh, fucking, he's, he keeps talking about, uh, how his, how his son is, like, really abusive towards him. And he's, like, he's talking to the guard and he's like, is this the way you treat your mother? Because he won't let him, he won't let her, won't fucking let Ernest outside. Or through the gate, I mean. And uh, the guy actually gets convinced that he is doing something wrong. He's like, uh, well, I guess my mother is a little mad at me. I thought that was hilarious. And all at once, uh, Ernest has like this leg chain thing 
um, attached to his leg. It, he's got like put up in the, the outfit he's wearing, and it falls down and hits the uh, hits the ground. And he looks at the guard and goes, "The doctor told me I'd only have to wear this till after the surgery." <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. It's like one of those ankle bracelet things, or not an ankle bracelet, but like a leg chain thing, like a ball and chain they put on you when you're when you're in jail sometimes. But um, I thought that was funny. Uh, as for how Ernest gets there, he's on jury duty. Uh, he goes to the to the, to the actual prison. Uh, he fucking gets distracted by the character Nash, who is also played by Jim Varney. Jim Varney plays this character really well, which makes me think that even though Jim Varney is really likable as an Ernest character, he could probably play an asshole character pretty good. I mean, honestly, because <laughs> he plays Nash really well. And uh, but uh, he they get Ernest over there, and uh, Nash's friend like knocks Ernest out. Um, and then they switch outfits, of course, and the other guy just leaves. But what I find funny is the guards like see Ernest like walk over there behind the dumpster and unless they're in on the switch too wouldn't they be like yo what the fuck you doing walking over behind that dumpster but whatever <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't have even noticed that I didn't even notice it the first hundred times I've seen this movie as a kid I only noticed it now because I'm an adult now and I've seen the movie you know five billion fucking times and I start noticing new shit on films after uh, after watching them so many times regardless of how good they are but uh, rim shots in this movie, I think, is the first film where rim shot Ernest's dog is in, and it's a cute little dog, and I, I like the dog. It's, I'm, um, I think, yeah, he wasn't in Ernest Saves Christmas. But yeah, this is his first appearance, I believe. I know he's in Ernest Scared Stupid, which I like Ernest Scared Stupid better than this film, but I'll get into that in that review. But uh, as far as the dog goes here, it's charming. It's very cute. I love. I like the dog a lot. It's cool to give Ernest like a little, uh, little dog sidekick or whatever. But um. So they switch outfits with him, and he's in jail. And it takes, so I find it really funny that Ernest is like so naive. It takes him a while to figure out he's actually in jail. And I love it when he's like eating at the table with all the other prisoners. And uh, the guard comes over there, and he started eating before everybody else. And uh, he goes, uh, oh, I'm sorry, our table doesn't have any steak sauce. I just find shit like that hilarious. Just Jim Carney's delivery with stuff like that is so funny. One thing leads to another, and eventually they're going to like execute uh, Ernest because they think he's Nash. And, they're going to fry him in the electric chair. And this kind of makes me sad because Ernest is, like, scared of dying and everything. And it makes me feel sad a little bit because Jim Barney passed away. and It makes me think about him dying. And that kind of hurts the, the love for this movie for me a little bit or liking this movie for me a little bit. That kind of hurts, like, how much I can like this movie because of that. Um, it kind of loses the charm a little bit for me because that reminds me that Jim Barney has passed away, which makes me feel so sad. It just makes me feel sad watching him, you know, feel really bad about the fact that he might die here but anyway i know i have to look past that you know uh, separate the art from the person but that's kind of hard sometimes but i don't let that damage the movie for me so he gets into the electric chair and they're gonna fry him and he fucking gets his electro man powers again and you get an amusing scene where he like starts blowing the fucking guards his guns out of their hands and shooting shit blowing it up and everything with his electricity powers like he's like shooting electricity out of his hands and he gets ready to break out and this one guy who's in jail Ernest like makes friends with him uh, he knocks out this other guy who's trying to stop Ernest from leaving. Um, the the guy that tries to stop Ernest from leaving is like somebody who's in on it with Mr. Nash, of course. Uh, but uh, the, one thing I find funny is like the guy who makes friends with Ernest is a prisoner there and he like never talks. I know I've seen this actor before, but I don't know his name. Uh, but uh, I've seen him in a bunch of other stuff. Uh, you'll know him when you see him. But um, one thing I find funny is his, the character's name is Lyle, I believe, and he like never talks to the whole movie. And finally, at the end of it, he speaks. And Ernest, uh, Ernest looks at him and goes, Lyle, you talked. That's great. I just find <laughs> that so funny. But uh, so Ernest gets out of jail. He, he fucking hightails it back to the bank. He wants to <clears throat> stop Nash, obviously, from robbing the bank. Now, one thing I find really funny here is these other two characters. I believe their names are Chuck and Bobby. And they're in a bunch of Ernest films. They were in the last film working at the like airport uh, luggage place or whatever. And Ernest saves Christmas. But um, they're, they're entertaining. Uh, one thing I find funny is, like, uh, Chuck thinks, uh, Nash is Ernest. Like, every time he comes up to him, he, like, slaps the shit out of the back of his head, and he's like, well, let's go, all the time when he's trying to rush him and stuff. I, that cracks me up because he does it, like, just random times every now and then, and I thought that was funny as shit. Um, and so Nash, like, rigs the place up to, he's gonna blow the vault, steal the money, get the fuck out of Dodge, basically. Uh, the real Ernest shows up there. Chuck is, uh, Chuck is handcuffed. Um... And then the girl that Ernest likes, she is tied up there as well. Ernest shows up there. Uh, him and Nash get into a fight. Um, 
another thing, like the stuff when uh, it's not focusing on Ernest when he's actually in jail, it's like weaker story material when it's not focusing on Ernest. Like it's got Chuck and Bobby, who are characters I like and actors that I I enjoy watching in these films. I do enjoy these two actors in these films. But um, the stuff that they're doing, like uh, they're showing the bank manager, like new security stuff they put together and everything, that's just not as interesting uh, as the stuff Ernest is doing in jail. That's just not as interesting. And they come up with little gags with it, like they got like this invisible plastic thing or whatever that you can't see, it, like falls down on top of the bank manager. Uh, that stuff like that. It's just not as interesting, but um, but they're still they're still fine. They're all right. They're not bad or anything. So we get to the end here. Um, Ernest gets electrocuted once again. You know, it's kind of getting a little bit predictable at this moment, a little bit much, because it's the third time in the same film he's been electrocuted. But it makes for a fun final. But at the same time, this final hurts the film a little because the special effects are so dated. I mean, no, the flying scenes here where Ernest flies are not as good as the Christopher Reese Superman film by any means. But uh, Jim Varney still makes it entertaining. It's still fun to watch. And you get some really funny scenes where Nash is like, got Ernest. He's like fucking banging him up uh, up and down like that. And he's like flying up and hitting his hand over and over. And uh, Jim Varney keeps going, Chuck, Bobby, Chuck, Bobby. <laughs> like, you know, help. I just thought that was funny. Um, then he like says, to the moon, bozo. And fucking uppercuts Ernest and knocks him into the ceiling. Oh, that was funny. But uh, Ernest managed to get the best of him because, well, Ernest has fucking superpowers. So I just found that funny. The fact that Ernest has superpowers. So um, he's like, uh, he gets uh, Nash trapped on the ceiling, uh, fucking drops him down on the floor, knocks him out. And then Ernest has to get the bomb, flies through the top of the bank and heads in the sky and the fucking thing blows up. So pretty entertaining final. It's just the weak, weak special effects and a couple shots damage this film a little bit or a lot really. The final kind of brings down any charm the film had up until then. But this is still an okay film and definitely a fun film to watch. And I recommend it to Ernest fans. But as for going for the first, uh, as for the, like, the group of films, of Ernest films I've watched so far, this one's the weakest. But it's still an okay film. I definitely, I recommend this film still. Just because a film is just an okay film doesn't make it bad. It just means it's, you know, not great. It's okay to watch. But, you know, it's not nothing to write home about. But once again, you know, the Ernest character is still fun and entertaining. And it's still definitely, you know, worth a watch. A lot better than a lot of other shit that gets put out in theaters and better than some big budget shit. Uh, I'll be honest, I enjoy this film more than any of the, more than either of the fucking Matrix sequels. Those are just horrible. Matrix 2 and 3, man, suck ass bad. But, uh, anyway, just to jump back into this here. So, Ernest saves the day, and they make, and the characters are, like, real sad, so they think Ernest is dead. But, you know, obviously, Ernest isn't dead. So it's predictable that he shows back up. Nash tries to take a hostage to try to get away, and Ernest's like burn up body falls down on top of him and fucking knocks him down. Um, and he's like, I came, I saw, I blew up, and he just falls down. And that's in the movie. Ernest saves the day. You know, cue in the movie. It's happy ending. You know, it's charming. So yeah, I'll give this film a two stars. Uh, two stars. It's an okay film. Uh, I give it an okay two stars. It's a fun little. It's a fun little watch, but is weak, much weaker than Ernest Saves Christmas. Um. But, um, another thing, like, Ernest, like, surviving a bomb blast in the sky, I mean, Ernest might as well be, you know, fucking Superman by that point. He might as well be a uh, superhero. He might as well be Superman or Green Lantern by that point. He can survive, you know, a fucking bomb blast like that, you know, right in his hand. That's a little bit much. But, uh, it's still, still entertaining and definitely an okay film. Like I said, what hurts it? is the stuff that's not going on in jail with Ernest. Uh, the other story stuff is just not as good. and doesn't hold up as well. It's not as entertaining. And the ending of it has uh, just one little bit too many weak special effects shots. But seeing Jim Varney play two different characters, playing a more of an asshole character, is really entertaining to watch, seeing him play the Nash character. And I do recommend this film. As far as like Ernest films go, it's the weakest one so far. It's almost as good as Ernest Goes to Camp, but it lacks that little extra charm because of the weaker special effects at the end, and because it seems like they're trying, uh, they're trying a little bit hard to find stuff for the other characters to do that are interesting besides Ernest and his story where he's in jail. But all in all, this is a two-star film. I recommend this film. Uh, I had a good time with this film, and I'm looking forward to seeing Ernest Scared Stupid, which I know I'll like better than this film. Uh, but how much I'll like it, I don't know. I just know that I will like it. I just remember liking Ernest Scared Stupid a lot, um, along with Ernest Saves, uh, along with Ernest Saves Christmas. 
Ernest Goes to Jail used to be my favorite, but now, I mean, when I was a kid, Ernest Goes to Jail was my favorite, but later on, Ernest Saves Christmas and Ernest Scared Stupid uh, definitely became my two favorites. So I'll see you guys again with Ernest Scared Stupid.